This is my $350 Mac Mini Killer Hackintosh. In the last video, I explained why I decided to install macOS on PC hardware, but what's it like to live with? Join me as I run some benchmarks and test out some real computing tasks such as music making, content creation, and gaming. In the last video, I ran a test in Geekbench 6, and the results were pretty impressive. Of course, when compared to the Apple Silicon machines, it looks substantially worse. But in my opinion, it's not that the i7-8700 is a slow chip, far from it. I just think it highlights how outrageous Apple Silicon is. In a nutshell, the 8700 is a fantastic chip, even in 2023. It's just that in recent years, Apple have really made strides in terms of raw compute performance with their own ARM-based architecture. I also ran a disk speed test, which produced good results. The disk in question is a 500GB M.2 SSD, and it's easily in the same ballpark as Apple Silicon machines, even surpassing the M2 MacBook Air disk speed. Remember that debacle? This machine also has a dedicated graphics card, the RX 570. Here it is next to Apple's M1 and M2 GPUs. I'm very happy with this. Speaking of graphical performance, how's about we try some games? It's not really what this machine was built for, but here's Minecraft. I swear, for a game where the world is made of blocks, it really does demand high specs. This is often my go-to game benchmark. It genuinely does challenge your hardware, and you can turn it into molasses on any machine. The $350 Hackintosh handles it decently, and we're able to hit 60 frames per second on moderate settings. Of course, if we do try to push it and attempt to meet the refresh rate of my main monitor, which is 165Hz, it struggles a lot. And of course, shaders are pretty much out of the question here. I also fired up Dota 2, and it was flawless. Full disclosure, I do not play Dota 2, so I have no idea what I'm doing, but it runs very well, with no noticeable dips in performance. I also tried out RimWorld, a favourite of mine, a game I would highly recommend, and it was equally as smooth. So what else am I doing on a machine like this? Well the main reason I started this project was for it to be my music making machine. Previously I used a 2012 MacBook Air, and it just could not cope. I absolutely love Logic Pro 10, and paired with my audio interface and my USB MIDI keyboard, it's pretty powerful. This machine has 32GB of RAM and a beefy enough processor to handle multiple demanding plugins such as reverbs, simulated pedal boards, and other VSTs, something which the 2012 MacBook Air was really struggling with. I am really enjoying using this machine to make music. For me, when I have Logic set up the way I like it, with all my plugins, it doesn't really matter if I'm running the latest Mac OS, which is something I'm definitely going to be contending with in the coming years. But so long as the machine's fast and it does what I need it to do, I'm happy. This machine's also fantastic for video making, and it's what I'll be using to produce this video. I have both Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro installed, but I tend to prefer the latter. Both timeline performance and render times are very respectable, and a lot of that is thanks to the dedicated graphics card, which allows Premiere to use the GPU to live render many effects. It's not going to be beating many modern records, and rendering is certainly not as fast as it would be on an Apple Silicon Mac, but it's fine for what I need it for. I could quite comfortably do a stream of 4K on this thing. For photo manipulation and design, Photoshop and Pixelmate are run great on this machine. I have previously used Apple Silicon machines, and the largest difference I notice is that on this machine, it takes a little longer to perform tasks that use content-aware filling, such as the Heal tool. That said, it's not a major issue. The issue with these Pro apps though, and I've touched on this, is that in the coming years, I'm not going to be able to run the most modern version of macOS. That's because Apple won't be releasing builds of macOS for Intel, since they've switched over to their own architecture. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. So what are my future plans for this machine? I've been reading your comments, and some of the top ideas are to upgrade the machine to the latest version of macOS, Sonoma, and set up Windows dual booting. 
I'll definitely do the former. I plan to clone the drive so that I can try and install Sonoma risk-free. Let me know if you want to see that process, it could be quite interesting. As for dual booting, I'm not sure if I will. I've got a dedicated Windows machine which I use for gaming. I'm also interested in exploring upgrading the RAM in this machine. I mentioned in the last video that the maximum capacity is 128GB, which is pretty wild. I've never had as much as 32GB before, never mind anything further. But I'm keen to see what kind of things can be done with such a high amount of memory. The cooling system could also do with a bit of an overhaul. The CPU cooler, while adequate, is pretty basic. Maybe a 120mm enclosed loop liquid cooler would be nice. At the very least, a couple more fans to help keep the temperatures down. All in all, I'm really enjoying this machine. It's butter smooth, handles moderate workflows with ease, and so far, seems to be very stable. All for multiple hundreds less than a real Mac with comparable CPU performance, and even thousands less than a real Mac with comparable graphics, storage, and memory. I'd also like to say thank you for all of the support on my last Hackintosh video. For my viewers old and new, your comments and feedback mean a lot to me, so thanks so much for being here. I also have a community Discord server, where you can chat to people about all of this geeky goodness to your heart's content. Why not check it out? Thanks very much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.